Hi, I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Ryan Vipon. And I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Joseph Tomaselli. We want to welcome you to the virtual tour of this office here at the National Weather Service in Brownsville, Texas. Today, we're going to give you, the viewer at home, an idea as to exactly what happens at your National Weather Service office in Brownsville and how this office serves to protect the people of the Rio Grande Valley and all of Deep South Texas. So come on in, join us, we'll introduce you to the folks that work here and just take a look at what happens here at this office. Well, as we begin with the virtual tour of your National Weather Service office in Brownsville, Texas, we are joined by one of the very first individuals you will meet if you ever take a live tour here of your National Weather Service office in Brownsville, and that is our Administrative Support Assistant, Rachel. Rachel, how are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Now, Rachel, you've been in Brownsville now for 11 years working here, and you have a wide variety of duties and tasks uh, to support the individuals here at the National Weather Service Office in Brownsville. You're not a secretary, you're an administrative support assistant. What are your typical duties here at the station? Well, I provide um, information and I prepare a lot of travel arrangements and um, order supplies, I process payroll, and I just provide assistance to the entire staff. So it sounds like you do a lot of duties uh, for the staff members here, for the hydrometeorological technicians, the, the meteorologists, uh, the meteorologists in charge, uh, the electronics technicians. If they have to go to uh, a temporary duty somewhere for school in the Midwest, uh, you prepare all those travel orders. Yes. You also make sure that uh, we get paid on a regular basis, which we thank you for, for very much. So you have a, a pretty wide variety of tasks here at the office. Yes, I do. Well, the folks, again, Rachel will be likely the very first person you meet if you ever take a tour of your local National Weather Service office here in Brownsville. Rachel, thank you, take, uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule today and joining us. Thanks. At the office here in Brownsville, we're responsible for a certain forecast area in Texas, and uh, all local offices around the country have a certain area they're responsible for forecasting information to and for sending warning information to. Our area here in Texas covers the southernmost counties in the state here in deep south Texas as well as our marine forecast area offshore 60 nautical miles east of uh, Padre Island. So that's our forecast area. We cover coastal waters and the Laguna Madre, the southern extent of that and the southern eight counties. Major metropolitan areas of course are Brownsville, Harlingen, and McAllen and then lesser populated areas farther north, as far north as Falfurius and Hebronville as well, and then back to the west towards Zapata and down towards Rio Grande City. So we have a fairly large area to cover and watch, which we do extensively here all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Continuing with the virtual tour of your National Weather Service office here in Brownsville, Texas, we are very pleased and very fortunate to offer you an exclusive look at uh, someone that you may not normally meet when you come by the station here in Brownsville, and that is our meteorologist in charge, Mr. Steve Drillette. Steve, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Now, your official title is the meteorologist in charge. Uh, what exactly do you do as the MIC here in Brownsville? Well, I oversee all the operations, all the operations, operations here at the office. Uh, that includes the facilities, our budget, uh, our inventory, our staff, uh, but primarily my job is to make sure that we're providing the best products and services for our partners and customers. Now you previously spent 11 years in Amarillo, Texas as the warning and coordination meteorologist up there so you've moved from one tip of Texas to another so I imagine going from the WCM to the MIC you've had to learn a whole new set of rules, a whole new set of guidelines in your new job down here. Absolutely and I, I call it climate culture shock. I came from uh, where we, where we had snow and tornadoes to the place where it was very warm all the time, a lot of humidity, and also also the threat of hurricanes. Well, and, and we can, as we can see from the trinkets on the wall, you're quite a large Texas A&M University fan, but you don't have to be a Texas A&M graduate to work here at the station as a journeyman or lead forecaster. We have some folks here who graduated from North Carolina State University, also from Penn State University, uh, University of North Carolina at Asheville, uh, Iowa State University, uh, just a very large compendium of folks who have uh, a degree in meteorology here at the station. 
Yeah, I, I love Texas A&M University. Proud Aggie, and I know we have several on station. And no, you don't have to be an Aggie to be to work here at Brownsville, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. Well, Steve, we know how uh, busy you are today, so we thank you for joining us. And do you have any uh, parting words for the folks at home watching the video today? Well, I would like to say that I'm just very fortunate and very happy to be here in Brownsville. Uh, you never know uh, how you're going to like some place until you get there, but I've been here a year now. Uh, the office is fantastic. We have a great staff. They work well. They do great, great things. Um, uh, the, the community has been very good to us, um, and my wife and I, we love the beach. So everything's great, and we're, we're really glad to be here. Well, Steve, we're very happy to have you here in Brownsville, we, and we hope you'll hang around for a while. But for now, thank you for joining us for today. Thank you. And this is our conference room here at the National Weather Service office in Brownsville. We use this room for various different functions. We have a plethora of uh, text and uh, reference material for uh, meteorological studies, for uh, research that is done here in the office, or for just general uh, reference if we have uh, wondering about a question about meteorology and, and things like that. So there's a lot of reference here that we can use for different things here at the office. This room is also used as a, a kind of a gathering place for tours that come into the office. We bring them in here, give a presentation of, of what we do here in the office. Uh, we also use this room for, uh, for guests, for uh, officials that come in, uh, for uh, presentations that we give to different officials here. Uh, the room is also used for staff meetings uh, here in the office as well. Uh, we use this uh, for various different functions for the public and for here in-house as well. One of the things we use here as far as presentation goes is uh, this big screen TV where we can display a lot of information. This particular happens to be our home page here, our office uh, website, and the uh, website address is www.weather.gov forward slash RGV where you can get the weather information for Deep South Texas and the Rio Grande Valley 24 hours a day, 7 days a week right here on this website. Go check it out if you have any weather conditions and concerns and questions about the area. Well, joining us here now in the operations area of your National Weather Service office in Brownsville, we have our lead forecaster, Jeff. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Joe. Now, I see you're sitting in front of a whole bunch of monitors, and it doesn't appear as if you're playing video games at this time. So, uh, can you please tell the folks at home exactly what these monitors are for and how they are an, an integral part of the operations here at the National Weather Service office in Brownsville? Joe, this is one of our several uh, workstations that we call AWIPS, our Advanced Weather Interactive Processing System. Uh, at our fingertips, we're able to monitor the weather uh, produce uh, our forecasts and analyze all the uh, weather conditions across uh, deep south Texas. Now what kind of information do you look at on these uh, computer monitors? I mean, uh, give, give the folks an idea at home what kind of information we look at. We have several different satellite uh, loops that we can monitor. We have our Doppler radar. We have uh, all our weather prediction models all the other tools that we need to produce a forecast. So we look at all we look at all of that information and then we stick that information into another software package and we use that to create the forecast for the eight counties here in deep south Texas. Yeah, just by uh, a few clicks of uh, the mouse we're able to use our graphical forecast editor and produce uh, forecasts uh, out to seven days. Now, can we also use this same system to issue like flash flood warnings, tornado warnings, and severe thunderstorm warnings? Uh, exactly. We have uh, a system within the workstation that's called Warn Gen Warning Generator. And again, just uh, from uh, just a click of a mouse, we're able to issue flash flood warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings, um, pretty much instantly to warn all people in the Rio Grande Valley of uh, any pending severe weather. So only a matter of seconds between the, the time we see a storm that looks nasty to, to the time we put out a warning to warn the people about that it's storm. It's right at our fingertips, Joe. Well, the folks at home, Jeff, will be looking for your warnings and also your forecast, so uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule, and uh, uh, the folks at home will be looking for your forecast, I'm sure. My pleasure. We now bring you into our R&D room here in the office, the research and development room, and basically that's what goes on here in this office. The staff uses it for research, for development, for different functions. One of the functions we use it for is to record our audio briefing on, 
And uh, that uh, audio briefing can be found on our website as well under the audio briefing link. But we record it every day here, every morning. Uh, the, one of the forecasters or, or one of the staff members here in the office come in and basically record a brief briefing of what's going to happen over the next couple of days here in the area. And, and folks at home can, can go and listen to that and see, see what to expect here in deep south Texas and the Rio Grande Valley that way on our website. One of the other functions this uh, room is utilized for is research. And uh, we have a number of posters that are on display here of the research that has been done in the past from this office. Uh, this particular poster here is talking about uh, the cold fronts that have moved through the Rio Grande Valley of deep south Texas over the last couple of years. It's been an ongoing research uh, project that's uh, taken place every winter. Uh, and we've recorded how many cold fronts have moved through the area, basically starting in uh, early fall, sometime around October, maybe uh, earlier than that or later than that, and all the way until sometime during the spring when the last front moved through. So we've recorded what's taken place as each front has moved through the area, what kind of weather it has brought, and things like that. So these posters were made about this study and taken to different workshops and conferences uh, around the area and around the country, basically. One of the other uh, topics that we've researched on that just happened recently is the big uh, flooding outbreak that took place along the Rio Grande River uh, during the summer of 2010. Of course, uh, we had Hurricane Alex and Tropical uh, Depression uh, 2 that moved through the area and dumped a lot of rainfall in the region, which emptied eventually into the Rio Grande River, which eventually led to all the flooding that took place along uh, this area. Uh, so this is uh, one of the other examples of, uh, of a research project that took place here in the office locally uh, looking back at that event and, and what took place. One of the other things that we use this office uh, and this room is for in the office is uh, going through uh, what we call the weather event simulator or WES machine and the forecasters use this machine to go through uh, say a different weather event that has either taken place here in the past locally or somewhere else around the country and uh, we use this uh, a weather event simulator or west machine to go through and basically practice in real time uh, how the event took place and, and how you would forecast or how a, a forecaster would go through the process here in real time uh, so it's, it provides a, a neat way for the forecaster to go through uh, an event without having to actually go through it uh, in, in actuality, but uh, you know we can load the information up here and, and go through the event and, and allows us to keep keep us uh, our, our our meteorological skills uh, sharp as well. So this is another thing we use this room for as well here, the R and D room at uh, WFO Brownsville. National Weather Service office here in Brownsville. We are joined at this time by our intern, Aaron. Aaron, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, Aaron, this is known as the upper air cubicle. Exactly what happens here uh, during the course of the day uh, at the office in Brownsville? Well, in this cubicle, twice a day, uh, we send up a radio sonde and we attach it to the weather balloon, which we'll see here in a little bit. And this radio sonde um, is how we get our soundings here and how we get information about the upper atmosphere. Um, and a radio sonde looks like this. Um, it's, a, it's a styrofoam box. It's got a temperature sensor. Um, a sensor in here for humidity. It also measures um, pressure and it also has a battery pack and a GPS transmitter and receiver. And the information that we get from that radio sonde comes onto here on the computer screen in this program um, and it tells us information you know, about the atmosphere as we go from the surface up to about 100,000 feet. Okay, wonderful. Well, we'll actually uh, be doing a balloon launch uh, a little bit later on today, in which we'll go out and we'll tie this instrument package off to the balloon, and it'll send data back to the office, and uh, we'll see that in a little while. But uh, thank you very much, Aaron, for your time today. Thank you.